And then when I do my live streams outside, he says... When she does her live stream, I'm in the room, <laughs> aircon's on, doors are all closed, I'm like, Hey there, it's Sonny Chew, 987 FM! <laughs> I oh, am yeah. totally not like that. It's like, wow, dude. I, I walk out, I'm like, is oh. there someone in, in the house? Is there someone in the room? Why are you speaking so loudly? I am literally crying. Hey, what's up? It's Sonny Chu. Welcome to yet another episode of Men Explain. Honestly, I'm having so much fun with this series and I'm learning so much as well. I cannot also believe that today will mark the very first time I'm doing a podcast with my partner in life. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeremy and I'm the lucky guy to be Sonia's partner. Thank Not you. the radio partner though. Yeah, I know. The real partner. Yeah, the, oh! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, today's topic is really interesting because I think, you know, between couples, we always have um, discussions like this. And on top of that, we've had some arguments over this as well. Mm -hmm. It's all about communication today. Hmm. So I'd say, you know, communication, it, it spans across a very broad, very wide perspective as well because it can be text messages, it can be the way we speak, yep. it can be the way we interact. Facial stuff. expressions. Yeah, facial expressions, text messages. Touch. Yeah, yep. yeah specifically, yep. I think for me, the text messages part, but we'll get into that later <laughs> on. <laughs> so um, maybe you can give our audience a quick introduction on how we met. Okay, so so we met on uh, the YOLO cruise. Very millennial. Uh, you only live once. Uh, it's a singles cruise. We were both there um, for work. I happened to see her on, on the ship and I thought, you know, she's a pretty cool girl. Uh, started chatting her up and the more I spoke with her, uh, the more I found her funny. cute, appealing, okay. funny, very funny. You make me laugh. Thanks. <laughs> uh, and then... After that, we basically kept in touch and uh, the rest is history. Can you believe it's been like three, three almost three, yeah, years three years since we met, yeah. right? Almost three years. So That's fast. Great. I know, so fast. Time flies, really. I mean, so today, obviously, along the way, we're going to be um, unpacking certain stereotypes as well. Communication between men and women at the same time. So I think we're going to start off with this, okay? Our producer has given us a set of true or false answers to okay. respond to. Okay? All right. So this is just to get the ball rolling so that okay. we can get Ready? deeper into it later on. <laughs> so I'm going to read out the questions okay. and then you're going to say true or false. I'm going to say true or false. Okay. okay? Be very careful with your answers. <laughs> True. Okay. <laughs> what? I mean, ask the question. Okay. The first question is, women tend to be more emotional than men. True. True? You think so? Yeah, true. Okay, like, to some extent, I, I think true as yeah, well. Yeah. I think you are rationally emotional, not crazy. Okay, next question is, men talk for the purpose of relaying information, which is very report style, yep. whereas women sometimes talk to form a connection, which is rapport style. Very true. True, right? Yeah, I think so too. Super true. <laughs> I think so too. So when I want to communicate something, I get straight to the point. Yeah. And I think we'll get to that later, uh, mm. especially on text messages. Yeah, we right? will, yeah. Um, but when you tell me a story, sometimes <laughs> it just digresses into one story to the next. So I, I lose the plot, is it? You lose the plot all the time. I, I lose gotta, the plot. I gotta like get you back. No. Yes. I lose the plot all the time in a conversation. you're losing the plot right now. Okay. So you say true. True, true, true. Okay. I think it's true as well. Next question. Uh, this is kind of related to the second one. Okay. Men prefer to keep their texts short, simple, and to the point, whereas we women are prone to be more expressive. True? Yeah, true. 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 Okay. Women yes. in, in general yeah. will write a bit more. Will be more expressive. Yeah, with but, emojis. but this is. What's your take on emojis? Does it break the, the tension? I, I like it because. In one picture, it encapsulates the, the emotion immediately. Is it like the laugh cry? Yeah, <laughs> the laugh, laugh cry. I didn't even yeah. just do the laugh cry oh, thing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, next one. In times of arguments, men can become uncommunicative so they can work out solutions on their own. Mm. Whereas women prefer to talk it out and they want to work their solutions out with not just you but other people as well. I think specifically for me, that's very true. Uh, I tend to confide in like my best friends and people that I you know hold very close to my social circle and I want to just I keep talking it out over and over and oh, over again yeah, yeah. just to you know get through and every time we argue I'm not sure if you, you feel this but I'm like 
fix it now, like solve it with me yeah. now, like talk yeah. to me, talk to me, and you're just like stop talking to me, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that's true too. Uh, for men, at least for me, um, sometimes I just want uh, some quiet time and head space to yes. digest. I do consult some of my guy friends uh, from time to time, but you know, not not often. I know. Because I feel like maybe as the guy, you are so-called um, meant to deal with it oh, okay. um, and not really seek help for, it could be a sign of like weakness. Right. Uh, I think that's perception, but I do speak with friends. I ask them for advice. But generally, I can see that it's very obvious for girls. Yeah. They will, meh, 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 among their best buddies, friends, they will digress to talk about beats, shopping, you know, <laughs> latest. It means beats like to make jewelry, yeah. FYI. <laughs> Not what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I don't disagree actually because I can spend like half a day chatting with my best friends, mm-hmm. you know, my best girlfriends, my best gay friends mm-hmm. as well. And we can spend six hours chatting about the same problem mm. and then revisiting that same question again at the end of it all. Yep. Six hours. And then you, when he says, okay, I'm going to go, you know, um, chat with my buddies or hang out with them and, and get their advice on something. One hour later, he's like, oh, I'm home. Boom, done. I'm like, and what do you guys talk about? Where did you go? And what, sometimes how? It, in, in the one hour, yeah. the conversation is like the first 20 minutes. And then what happens after That's that? That's it. Then we talk about other stuff. Uh. Like bicycles and cars. cars. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Boring. Okay. <laughs> um, next set of questions. Okay. What is your love language? I, I can I should I say what okay, I think yeah. your love language all is? Right, right. I think his love language would be um, touch and time spent, quality time spent. Is that, <laughs> no, <laughs> really, he's not. That's yeah, wrong. No, it's wrong. No, it's wrong. Touch, not touch. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so touch is top two. Okay, wait. I changed my mind. You are touch, and words of affirmation. Correct. Okay. Wait, what's mine? Oh. Yours <laughs> <laughs> is um. Same. Yeah, I would say largely the same. But I also like to give you stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I like to give you like mixed stuff and like write cards and stuff like that. Uh, right. Yes, yes, yes. Small cards, surprises, little notes. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I love that. That's really nice. Okay, cute. So now we're going to break things down a little bit, you know, based on all the questions that we answered to, true, false, all the other questions that we did earlier on. So I, I like that you brought up this point earlier on that I want to emphasize on. You said that guys or men rather, sometimes they might be expected to not seem emotional or not want to uh, not appear to ask for help yeah. because it may not seem like manly enough due to all the societal um, expectations. Mm. So do you think it is largely due to societal perceptions that you also as a result have you know have grown up thinking like I must you know maintain this certain image I shouldn't ask for help? Yeah I think there's there is uh, that um that influence or that expectation. Yeah. I mean, the, the phrase man of the house already says it all, right? Yeah. That phrase implies that the man is in charge and has the responsibility yeah. of looking after everything, to, to sort everything out. Um, but then as we, as we progress in time, you know, now uh, that may not necessarily have to be true mm. uh, because I think women... Uh, uh, so capable. I mean, many uh, are working moms, and they are more capable of, more than capable of being, you know, in in charge. And so, this responsibility of being in charge, I feel, should be shared. Mm. Right. There is no need to place all that uh, emphasis on 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 the man and giving him that pressure. Mm. I don't disagree with that. I mean, flashback to your little cameo on our first episode. Now, don't get me wrong, I really like my job, I enjoy what I do, but, you know, someone's got to take one for the team, right? And if Sans can earn more, why not? Um, and I guess, Sans, when can I quit? <laughs> what? Obviously, you're very, you know, you think very differently, I mean, so mm-hmm. it's quite refreshing to hear that too. And, by the way, it's totally okay if you ever need to cry, because mm. I don't think I've ever seen him cry. I've never seen you cry, cry. Mm. Like, you've seen me cry like a million times 
over the smallest things like watching Love Island, I cry. Yeah, but actually, <laughs> what you, what you don't know is that yeah. uh, I'm actually very emotional, and I actually do cry even when I watch movies. Just that you don't know. What? <laughs> you see, like you know, it's just no like, way. Like this. No. Yeah. Like the quivering <laughs> tear yeah. tear at the side. Then I'll be like. Also, oh, when I think that you're fixing your glasses, you're actually wiping away. Yes. Oh, I never knew that. Okay. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> okay. So, um, we're going to move on to the report and rapport style. Okay. Because we were saying early on and you agree that the way that men communicate, you're like a reporter, right? You're just like, yep. yeah, yes, no, maybe to da, the da, point. Da, 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 yeah. da, da. Ask you, yeah. so why? Why is it that, you know, we're not the same when it comes to this mode of communication? I don't know. I think, uh, I'm not sure whether it's uh, programming. Yeah. Um, but we just get kind of like straight to the point. Yeah. If you think I I, I am uh, quite short and sharp. Cut. Cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I think he's, he's, he's very I short. have friends who are even like less wordy than me. Are they the type that will write like the letter K full stop? Like, yes. I hate that, by the way. That pisses the hell out of me. But you see, that's the thing. So, sometimes <laughs> the, the K may be like, K. Versus no, the way it reads. What like, I think is like, K. K. Yeah, that's right? what I think. Yeah, you're like, K. So you think it's like, like okay, yeah, yeah. okay, like, K, 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 okay. K, 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 K. So sometimes I add this behind. Oh, but that's a bit abrasive sometimes too, I like, feel. Okay. No, but I don't see so I that. add a smiley face. <laughs> Sometimes when people just put this, I'm like, wow, I did not even How deserve this? a word. I use this a lot, so. You use the thumbs up a lot. Yeah. Sometimes two. Yeah, I know that's the end of the conversation when you put just answer with emojis. I know you're busy or <laughs> <Okay>. something. <laughs> but do you think that your mode of communication matches mine? Because you said that I'm more wordy and more emotional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm more, I don't know, I beat around the bush sometimes. So maybe on text, I could be a little bit more uh, um, aware yeah. uh, that you think I'm, I am I can be quite direct and curt. Yeah. So sometimes I soften it with yes, emojis yes, yes, or... Yes. Uh, uh, a gif. A, yeah, yeah, a gif. Yeah. Gif breaks the eyes. Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay. Right? Some cute dog, cat. Yeah. <laughs> Works all the time, guys. I think he saves that just for me, by the way. I don't know prior to this whether he ever used any of seals, these seals, silly things. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I I try to be aware of that. But sometimes when I'm rushing, yeah. like, tick, 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 yeah. like come on man, like I need your reply. Yeah. And I uh, don't reply. <laughs> yeah. Then, you know, I get to be quite quick, sharp. Then this is where I would say what I like about us is that we call each other if mm. it's really urgent. Yes, yes. So I, I know that there are some people who hate phone calls. Um, they find it abrasive. They find it confrontational. Whenever you receive a phone call, it's like, what, what did I do wrong? Yes. Like, why is someone confronting me? I read in a book that's a millennial thing. No, yes. no, 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 yes. no, really? Last time during my teenage years, I would be on the phone talking <laughs> late into the night. You mean the one like this? No, Hello? that's a handphone. Oh, my phone is wired. Oh. Oh, that this one's not like, on a wall. Creak, creak, no. Creak. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. It's not on the wall. No, it's, it's wired down form. below. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we would speak <laughs> into the night. But now you guys just text. And so I read that it's a millennial thing. But we do call each other. Yes. I mean, we, we call each other yeah. when, when, when it's urgent. Yes. And yeah. I like that, uh, you know, sometimes when you drive, long drive, yeah. you call me and we chat. Yeah. Catch up on each other's day. Yeah, uh, it's mostly me ranting about my day. <laughs> it's a long drive, so long happy drive. to entertain yeah. her. That's what I like about him, actually. I think being with you has kind of trained me to utilize phone calls a little bit more <laughs> as well, which I personally like because obviously I'm a very vocal person. I like to, you know, say it as it is and vocalize my feelings as well mm. versus text, which can be misconstrued a lot. Yes, correct. Yeah. Easily. Sometimes. Easily misconstrued, yeah. yeah. But have any of your, say, ex-girlfriends or other people around you ever given you feedback that your text messages can be quite scary? <laughs> or nobody has ever said that? Uh, actually, come to think of it, no one has really said that. Oh, wow. But I think... Maybe they're just scared to tell you because you're the boss. <laughs> my, team, my team would have something to say about that. Let's call them for the next episode. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I can be quite direct. Uh, yes. And I admit that. So working from home, I hear him going like, Jeremy Song, yes, blah, 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 blah. I don't know what he's saying. So I'm like, I don't know what you're saying. He's like talking about numbers and like, Thailand, yes, China. 
<laughs> that total rubbish. Is that completely not what you do? That's what I do. That's, that's what, what I do. he okay. sees. See, that's what he does. And then when I do my live streams outside, he says. When she does her live stream, I'm in the room, aircon's on, doors are all closed. I'm like, hey, there's Sonny Chew 987 FM. <laughs> I am totally not like that. It's like, wow, dude. I walk out, I'm like, is there someone in in the house? Is there someone in the room? Why are you speaking so loudly? I am literally crying. So, aside from that, Mm. has there been a time where we had, you know, let's say a small tiff that sort of escalated to a really big argument that you can remember off the top of your head? It can be anything like, you know, something small that happened that sparked it up. And uh, how did we resolve it, if you remember? We don't really argue that much. We don't. We actually um, don't. Yeah. But I, I do remember one time oh, no. we were talking about something and then you were like, you're angry, is it? And then I'm like, no, I'm not angry. Then she's like, no, no, no. I think you're angry. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not angry, man. <laughs> and the more she says I'm angry, angry, the more angry I get. I'm like, I'm not angry. Why, why do you say I'm angry? <laughs> No, but I, I remember that argument yeah, yeah. actually because Correct. it was really a nothing... Nothing I, argument. I actually don't even remember the, the reason why I thought you were angry. Correct. Correct. <laughs> I, don't make, I don't remember it at all. So, it is a perfect example of an argument about nothing but really... <laughs> that became something. Yeah, really about uh, communication. So, I, if I remember correctly, that argument did not end well in the initial uh, in the initial yeah. phase it ended with some someone leaving the situation yeah. and closing cool the door down, yeah. to cool down I think it was you yes. you probably left to cool down yeah. while I was just simmering in it in the, I was just like probably lifted up my phone and texted my friends like do you won't believe what just happened <laughs> How did we resolve it in the <clears throat> end? Did we just step out and decide like, hey, so, you know, we cooled down already, let's <clears throat> talk about it. Yeah. It was nothing. So obviously in a, <clears throat> in a situation like that when things uh, escalate or yeah. um, irrelevant stuff get brought into the, into the argument, we recognise that after cooling down. Yeah. I think having some headspace helps. Yeah. Uh, and then coming back when we are cooled down to actually... Apologize talk about it. So, and, yeah. so having time out, is, I feel is important. True. But having time in is also equally important to then uh, kind of walk through uh, what actually is the issue and then uh, talk calmly about it. Yeah, I think he's got many, you know, great points about this. And I feel like I've learned a lot as well in the few years that we've been together. I think I've matured a little bit too because possibly when we first started going out, I don't know, whenever we had an argument, I might be very hot-headed. But he's just like, you know, let's just take some space. Like, you don't want to say things that you regret, like in an argument and stuff. And I think I've learned that from you as well. Mm. To really just, you know, calm down a little bit and then firstly apologise because in every argument, I feel we both might have said hurtful things or Mm. we both might be in the wrong to some extent. And the fact that, you know, me, I know that you get very irritated when I ask you, like, are you mad? Like, are you angry when you're actually not? So he also explained to me that it could be me projecting my unhappiness onto him when I ask him, are you unhappy? Mm. Like, Because I'm actually the one that is upset with the situation yeah. or how the situation panned out. Yeah. yeah. Actually, this, this point is, uh, is true. So it's been studied um, about this yeah. uh, ego projection. Yeah. Something for, for, for the audience to, to read up about. on. Yeah, it's yeah. actually uh, quite quite relevant yeah but what I'd say also to give you um, credit because you know you you have to give credit when it's due you actually make an effort to communicate in my language a little bit more as well not just talking about the emojis and the gifs and all Mm -hmm. that but you know sometimes when we decide like hey maybe we need a date night or something it's not just like so cold and straight to the point like hey date night ah, okay lah where you wanna go Mm. it's not like that he actually makes the effort to plan the place you know to book the restaurant um, and and also plan maybe like a little day out and he will communicate that to me on text and because you're so organised and practical he states it out sometimes in point form like we're going to do this first we're going to do this <laughs> then we're going to end with the restaurant here the end what do you feel about this how do you feel about this babe like, I'm like okay this is great I can just relax <clears throat> and go along with your plan yeah, a so a work has it uh, occupational I, has it but I do appreciate that because I can be so all over the place. I can be like, yeah, I want to do this. I want to do that. But you sort of like, okay, we're going to do this for a date. So I appreciate that you have um, evolved. I appreciate you appreciating. Are you angry? <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> so how long do you think we took to sort of find this balance in our relationship? Our, our balance? communication um, balance, I would well, say. Well, I think at the get-go, we were already kind of like 80% there. Okay. Okay. So the rest is all fine tuning. Yeah. Um, and for me, it has been actually uh, easy. Mm. The the difference will inherently be there. Yeah. Um, it's just that finding that uh, bridge, mm. and even this bridge in terms of communication is not just between genders, but also across age gaps. Of course. Yeah. 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 So finding that bridge, the ability and the platform for which you can come and have in an exchange of ideas yeah. in a rational, neutral fashion. That is essentially communication. I agree. And across, you know, many different diverse couples as well, I think that it is so important to treat it as a learning journey between the two of you, like in a relationship. Mm. We are still constantly learning about our communication differences and how we make it better as mm. well. Um, I think, you know, it's always good to check in on yourself too, like talk about these things. Um, you know, see a counsellor if you think that perhaps, you know, the, the breakdown is really there and you can't solve it between the two of you. I think there's nothing wrong with also seeking for a professional help or like a third person point of view sometimes that really gives you yep. a fresh perspective as well a neutral third party mm. environment yeah. to kind of like uh, de-escalate yeah. uh, certain situations and also a, a best friend of mine uh, recommended um, communication style of writing let's say if there's an argument yeah. um, he recommended writing all your thoughts down don't send that email letter immediately <laughs> come back and read it maybe Revisit. a day later mm. uh, amend certain things, I'm sure there will be things to amend and then send it. So it gives the reader the chance to digest all the feelings at one go. Yeah. Because if that was communicated live, yeah. the person might interject. So I, I thought that was quite an interesting idea. I agree. I mean, he totally answered my next question, which was, you know, if you had any advice for couples who have communication issues, which I think you can read my mind. Um, we did this before when we wrote down yeah. um, what I like about you and what I really can't stand about yeah. you. I think we did this quite yeah. uh, two years ago, was it, when we had a we had some sort of an argument as well. And it really helped yeah. because, you know, it was point blank, black and white, in your face, what I love and what I don't love so much about you. And then we fixed it from there. Mm. I think it's safe to say that we addressed 90% or yeah, 80% yeah. to 90% of it. Yeah. I'm yeah. still a little bit of a messier person compared to him. But aside from that, yeah. I think that gives the ability mm. to see each other's point of view. Yeah. 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 And I think that's what's important. Okay. So safe to say, um, you know, communication issues exist not just in romantic relationships, but also interpersonal relationships as well. And, you know, we're only unpacking and dissecting one segment of communication today. I mm. wish we really had more time because I think there's so many subcategories of this topic that we can go into. But just to wrap things up, I would say, um, any last words that you want to leave, you know, for our listeners, for our audience today? Uh, no, I think communication is just uh, a, a clear, the, the most important form of um, how people exchange ideas, right? Mm. In communicating with a partner or uh, a, a relative or a colleague, um, sometimes it's quite important to be, to be conscious and aware. And I, I felt that it was helpful when, mm. when you told me um, how I may appear to be. And so, so then that gave me some, some feedback and, and ability to adjust. Yeah. And if you hadn't told me that, I wouldn't know. Yeah. So I think it's, always, it's quite helpful to always ask for some uh, feedback so that we can um, you know, always improve. Yeah. Maybe don't ask how, whether you're angry though. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the only question I will stay away from. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on this episode with me. I think this was a very interesting experience um, airing our personal thoughts, you know, on this video and for our audience as well. So make sure you get your artist manager to send an invoice to me later. Okay, I will. I'm the artist <laughs> manager and I'll take a 20% cut. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure that you hit the like, share and subscribe button. Leave a comment because uh, we'll be interested to hear what you think as well. Yeah, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>